Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. At the end of week one of Kamala Harris's presidential bid, she pulls within one point of Trump's lead. We have the latest from the New York Times Siena College survey, one of many surveys, I might add. It shows that the race is tightening this week. We'll break down the results of this first full survey after Joe Biden dropped his bid for another four years in the Oval Office. After a meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Thursday, Vice President Kamala Harris told reporters they had a frank and constructive discussion in which she pledged to always ensure that Israel is able to defend itself. Six House Democrats voted in favor of a resolution condemning President Joe Biden's administration and Vice President Kamala Harris for their failure to secure the United States border. This happened uh, yesterday in the U.S. House. And some Trump rally attendees had a surprise waiting for them after a great rally supporting President Trump in Charlotte. Their car had been towed. Attendees at Trump's rally at the Bojangles Arena in Charlotte, North Carolina, were left stranded and confused after their cars were towed from a Dunkin' Donut parking lot just down the road from the arena. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. Yeah, I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth! shall set you free here's joey hudson vice president kamala harris is edging former president donald trump's lead in a hypothetical general election matchup according to a new poll conducted after joe biden dropped out of the 2024 presidential race the new york times siena college released a new survey that found that trump leads harris by only one percentage points among likely voters that was 48 to 47 percent Among registered voters, Trump led Harris by two percentage points, uh, this down from uh, a four to five percentage point in the most recent uh, New York Times Siena College uh, poll prior to this one. The new results reveal that this is a tightening race since Democrats changed their nominee. Uh, The New York Times poll in July found that Trump was leading Biden by six points. Harris secured a 10-point lead over Trump among voters 45 and younger, a key demographic that the Republican nominee was previously leading in, according to the New York Times polling, uh, again, just three weeks ago. According to the survey, about 79% of Democrats or Democratic-leaning voters want Harris to be the party nominee after Biden's withdrawal, while 27% think Democrats should have a competitive process to select a new nominee. About 87% of respondents said they either somewhat or strongly approve of Biden's decision to drop out of the race. Additionally, 45% of respondents say that they do not approve of the job Biden is currently doing as president. Now, let me caution you, don't be too too concerned by this one poll. Yes, this this is the narrative that the pollsters and then the Democrats, for that matter, but particularly the left-leaning media. This is the narrative they want us to buy into that boy do we have a race going now uh kamala harris is pulling within one percentage point of of donald trump trump was leading by six points just three weeks ago well i told some friends at dinner last night kamala harris had the best week she will have in this year's presidential race this week it's downhill from here as the american people get to know the vice president think about it we don't really know that much about kamala harris other than a lot of people think that she is the queen of word salads people think of her as just sort of that goofy lady that joe biden appointed as his second in command people think of her as the border czar who didn't go to the border for months So don't be too concerned right now that Kamala Harris seems to be 
pulling within striking distance of Donald Trump. She's sort of the new shiny object right now for Democrats. I don't think this is going to hold. I don't think once she's had a chance to be out on the campaign trail, and that's to our advantage because I do believe, unlike Joe Biden, who in 2020, and he blamed it on COVID, but I think his handlers already knew the condition Joe Biden was starting uh, uh, to, to be in. Because let's face it, we didn't really have a campaign in 2020. COVID canceled all that out, and Joe Biden took full advantage of it. Joe Biden did not want a campaign, so COVID was a great cover for him. He didn't really know what he was going to do this year when he was going to have to really campaign. And that's why I believe that someone within his administration pulled the trigger on the idea of having an early debate for him to prove himself, to prove that he was not going to be a good candidate. I'm sure they're kicking themselves that they, that they didn't do it earlier. James Carville, who is considered one of the masterful Democrat strategists, seems to agree with me that this was probably the best best week that Kamala's going to have. He appeared on MSNBC and warned Democrats not to get too excited. This has been a real change in mood in party and around the country. But we've got to be a little careful. There's about 10 percent too much tribalism going on. And, you know, it's going to be a right. very difficult race. It's going to be very close. And I understand that people are feeling a lot better and excited. But uh, that excitement's got to be tempered with realism. And the, the realism is she has a tough campaign to run. And as you, as you say, she's got several things she's got to accomplish at the same time. All I'm saying to Democrats is enjoy yourself, feel good. But... Uh, we'll get, you know, it's tough sledding ahead and let's get together and get this thing done. Carville warned members of his party to be careful in their support for Vice President Harris and said that there was, as you heard, some tough sledding ahead. And that's that's being kind. Uh, Harris, of course, the person that the Democrats right now believe will be their nominee. That could change. We don't know yet. You know, Donald Trump had suggested today that Yes, he wants to debate Kamala Harris if she is the nominee. He said that he wants to wait until it's official before he agrees to anything, which is a good thing. Because who knows? She may not be the nominee. I think you and I need to be pulling for her and hoping that she is the nominee because I think she's a great candidate for Trump to run against. Back to Carville. He also warned that Democrats need to face the reality that Donald Trump has a lot of support behind him. MSNBC's John Heilman asked about some of Harris's weaknesses, including her work on the border crisis and questions surrounding Biden's health and ability to serve. Carville said that Harris would have to defend and discuss the questions about a possible cover-up of Biden's health issues because you, you have to assume that, that Kamala Harris knew the condition Joe Biden was in. No way that she could be uh, that involved in the Biden administration and not know. Unless, of course, she really wasn't that involved, which is a whole different uh, set of problems for her if she hasn't really been playing a role as vice president. On the immigration issue, which is top of mind, everywhere that I've been this year, starting in Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, Super Tuesday, uh, and, and most recently uh, up, up in uh, North Carolina this week, talking with, with Trump supporters, you ask them about the issues that you think will be top of mind on voters when they go to the polls in November, immigration is consistently, if not number one, number two. People are going to want to know why Kamala Harris, the border czar, which now they're trying to say, well, she really wasn't the border czar. But we know what the president tasked her with, right? It's very clear that she was going to take on the issue of the southern border, and we know that she failed miserably. So Carville suggested that uh, Harris point out that Republicans walked away from a border bill in Congress, this, this so-called bipartisan bill that, that even Joe Biden talks about from time to time. He said that she can make the argument that border crossings are down slightly right now. And the second thing that she can point to rather legitimately is border crossings are down. Uh, are we going to win that issue? No, we're not going to win it. But we can do a lot better in 
the issue, I think, it, to some extent, will run out of steam with them if she gives some effective, cogent answers. And that's going to be important. And you're right yeah. to say that, John. She's got, she, her defensive, it's like the NBA. Your defensive game is just as important as the offensive game. So you tell me, is Carville right when he says that the issue of immigration may run out of steam? I don't think it is. I don't think the American people are going to forget about the millions of people who are in our country now, most of whom we don't even know who they are, where they came from, and what their plans are when, once they've gotten here, including probably some terrorists, including some, some very bad people who came here not to do good, but to wreak havoc on our, on our way of life. Are you going to forget it? Are you going to forget those millions of people who've come across our border? James Carville is a pretty smart guy when it comes to uh, political strategy. I think he's missed on this one. I don't think there's any chance that the American people are not going to remember the situation at our southern border when they pull that lever in November. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with PhD weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your, your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today 864-252-4925 set up your initial consultation with phd weight loss and nutritious boy am i glad that i met dr ashley lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy you're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again uh, play with the kids the grandkids be able to to hike and and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18 round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. The head of the FBI made a pretty stunning assertion yesterday that former President Donald Trump may not have been struck by an actual bullet when this gunman attempted to assassinate him at the political rally a couple of weeks ago now. His explanation of what happened to Trump's ear, because we all saw that in real time, and the video has been replayed over and over and over. So something happened to the president's ear. So what does FBI Director Christopher Wray say could potentially have happened? He said that maybe rather than a bullet, he was injured by shrapnel. All right. Now, I don't know a whole lot about gunfire. I, I like to shoot guns. I own guns. I go to the, to the practice range from time to time. But somebody help me out here. So, some of my gun enthusiasts out there who know a lot more about guns than I do. How could shrapnel have hit Donald Trump's ear? and caused, caused the damage that we saw, caused the bleeding that we saw. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I thought shrapnel was something that came from like a, a detonation of, of a bomb and pieces of metal. So, so where did this shrapnel come from if it wasn't the bullet? FBI Director Christopher Wray was talking to, House Judiciary, uh, to the House Judiciary Committee this was a hearing that uh, it was not clear precisely what caused the injury if, in fact, you accept the FBI director's argument. He said, with respect to former President Trump, there's some question about whether or not it's a bullet or shrapnel that hit his ear in response to a question from one of the House Judiciary Committee members, uh, Chairman Jim Jordan. Jordan had asked about the eight shots fired by the 20 year old would be assassin at, at this, this rally that went wrong on July the 13th. Jordan began by asking, we obviously know that Mr. Comperator lost his life. 
Two other rally goers were injured, and then one that hit President Trump. Where did all the eight bullets go to? Trump's team, of course, blasted the assertion, calling it conspiracy BS. Trump spokesperson Stephen Chung told the New York Post, anyone who believes this conspiracy BS is either mentally deficient or willfully peddling falsehoods for political reasons. Now, if this had been Joe Biden, and I'm glad it wasn't, but if Joe Biden had had a near-death experience and it was his ear that had been sliced by a bullet and a Republican suggested that, well, it really wasn't a bullet, it was shrapnel. The, the media the, in the left would be standing on their heads right now, objecting to this. The response so far is like they're, well, maybe, maybe it was shrapnel. Because you know what? They don't want it to be a bullet. They don't want Donald Trump to have survived a near-death experience from the bullet of a would-be assassin. Uh Stephen Chung said, we have seen there is no depth low enough for the Biden-Harris administration, so it's not surprising they are doing this now. The FBI directors, of course, uh, his, his comments contradict what Donald Trump described to us and what we have seen in live video taped that day, not only from the news media, not only from MSNBC, CNN, some of the left-leaning media who was there, who had cameras there, but from literally hundreds of people who were there who was who had their own video, had their phones out. The uh, director described it as a very surreal experience that was supposed to have left him dead. Again, we have no motive for what this young man wanted to do. Trump said in an interview with the Post one day after the shooting, the doctor at the hospital said he had never seen anything like this. He called it a miracle. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be dead, Trump said. And he said the same thing during his speech at the Republican National Committee uh, convention in Milwaukee last week. You may recall Trump at the beginning of the speech gave us a, a quick summary of what happened and what was going on in his his mind at that particular time he recalled how uh he was ushered away in a very chaotic fashion by secret service agents despite wanting to continue to speak and assuring people that he was okay he said i just wanted to keep speaking but i just got shot the uh, the doctor previously said the bullet came less than a quarter of an inch from entering his head. And again, we can watch the video again. We can see him deflect and, and quickly reach for his ear at that very second that the bullet glazed his ear. Former White House physician and current Congressman Ronnie Jackson said in a statement, and I talked with Dr. Jackson at the Republican National Convention. He came through media, uh, media row, and we asked him, had he moved slightly the other way, Ronnie Jackson said this would have been another JFK. The bullet track produced a two centimeter wide wound that extended down to the uh, surface of the ear, wrote Ronnie Jackson, noting that he had examined Trump the night that he was shot. Remember, Ronnie Jackson was the White House physician when Trump was president. He said there was initially significant bleeding followed by marked swelling of the entire upper ear, which is we, we know that any, any kind of cuts on your ear and your head bleed profusely. But I can't believe that the FBI director would, say, would make such a statement in, in today's time, knowing what's on the, the American people's minds right now, knowing particularly Trump supporters, how we believe that, that Donald Trump, that, th- that this was a, a, an obvious effort to silence Trump, to take him off of the ticket in November because he's such a threat to the Democrats. And for this man to say, well, maybe it wasn't a bullet. Maybe it was shrapnel. Again, where did the shrapnel come from? The shrapnel from what? Trump uh, attacked Ray on True Social, accusing the FBI director 
whom, by the way, Trump hired, of sweet-talking the committee when it came to his concerns over President Biden's apparent mental decline. He said, I watched the congressional hearing today as Christopher Wray was asked the question whether or not he noticed any cognitive de- degeneration in any of the conversations with crooked Joe Biden. This is a post from Trump on True Social. Do you believe Christopher Ray's right that it could just be shrapnel? Love to get your comments. Send me a quick text. Email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances. When you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance warehouse in pickens it's worth the short drive over to pickens jeff johnny kyle the whole team over there they'll take good care of you they have an award-winning service department expert installation extended warranties and a discounted appliance warehouse they treat you like family you're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there discounted appliance warehouse they're proud to offer speed queen the only washer and dryers with manufacturers warranties that cover parts and labor you owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Hope you'll join the conversation today, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. So Vice President Kamala Harris told reporters after her meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that they had a frank and constructive discussion in which she pledged to always ensure that Israel is able to defend itself. Harris said that she's always had an unwavering commitment to the existence of the state of Israel, to its security, and to the people of Israel. She said, quote, I've said it many times, but it bears repeating, Israel has a right to defend itself and how it does so matters now i guess we have to give harris some credit for this at least publicly saying that she believes israel has the right to defend itself kind of ended there though because she added and i'm reading from her statement it's time for this war to end and end in a way where israel is secure all the hostages are released the suffering of palestinians in gaza ends and the Palestinian people can exercise their right to freedom, dignity, and self-determination. She said that she told Netanyahu, it is time to get this real, this deal done. So to everyone who has been calling for a ceasefire and to everyone who yearns for peace, I see you and I hear you. Netanyahu's visit, of course, has sparked massive anti-Israel protests this week in the nation's capital. He addressed Congress on Wednesday. While demonstrators were outside flying Palestinian flags, burning American flags, and tagging a statue with the warning, Hamas is coming. The vice president added that she expressed her serious concern about the scale of human suffering in Gaza, including the death of far too many innocent civilians. She said, I made clear my serious concern about the dire humanitarian situation there. She said, we cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. She didn't take any questions from reporters. I wonder what she had to say, though, about Gaza invading Israel. You know, Mike Gallagher and I are talking about having, uh, leading another trip to Israel, possibly before the end of the year. We were there back in late February, early March. We went to the first kibbutz near Oz that's right near the border of the Gaza Strip. We were able to look into the Gaza Strip. We were less than a mile from there. We could could hear gunfire. We could hear bombing. We could see the smoke. But we could also see the devastation that these terrorists caused in this little small farming community of near Oz. I wonder if Vice President Kamala Harris would be interested in going with Mike Gallagher and me to see this for herself and then see what her attitude is about about Gaza and the Palestinians and about Hamas. 
yeah, it's easy for her to talk about the conditions that people living in Gaza are, are having to endure. And I get that. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for these young, innocent children who aren't even old enough to know what's happening to them. I'm sorry that they're hungry. I'm sorry that they're dying. I'm sorry for the, for the innocent men and women who have, have nothing to do with the war. They want it to be over. I get that. But unfortunately that's the price that has to be paid when you live and you support a bunch of terrorists. So yes, everybody wants the war to be over, but only when Israel is safe. And that should be our first priority. And that should be Kamala Harris's priority as well, because I think that's what a majority of the American people want. Most people watch the images that we've seen this week of these protesters in Washington, D.C., burning American flags, putting the Palestinian flag in place of the American flag. Now, I understand the freedom of speech idea. I understand that you should be able to peacefully demonstrate. But again, they took it uh, beyond peaceful demonstration when they tried to destroy the statue of Christopher Columbus in Columbus uh, Square or Circle, Columbus Circle, I guess it is. They should not be allowed to do that. And yes, I I understand that they're protesting a war in their home country. But you can protest something and not destroy public property. You can protest something and not destroy the symbol of freedom that we all, uh, that, that, that our American flag represents. That flag represents the idea that they can have their demonstration, that they can speak out and they can be heard. You think Kamala Harris is interested in going to Israel with Mike Gallagher and me to see this firsthand, to, to visit the site where these young people were just enjoying music, dancing, having fun, when these Hamas terrorists paraglided into their, air, uh, into their little music festival? When these terrorists came riding through on dirt bikes with, with machine guns, shooting everyone in sight? Think, think Kamala Harris wants to uh, see that that part of the uh, of the Hamas terrorists of the Palestinians? I don't think so. I, I don't think Kamala Harris will come anywhere close to the Gaza Strip. But hey, that that's just one of many issues that she's going to have to confront. You know the other issue that Kamala Harris is going to have to deal with, and it, I referenced it a, a, a little earlier today. When a poll talked about that people want to know to what degree Kamala Harris knew about Joe Biden's cognitive decline, what did she know about Joe Biden and when did she know it? More than three-fifths of Americans believe that the vice president was involved in covering up Joe Biden's declining health, according to two different polls. Prior to Biden announcing on Sunday that he was dropping out, These polls conducted after his withdrawal and before he gave his speech on Wednesday, they show that a supermajority of Americans think that Vice President Harris was involved in concealing Biden's declining cognitive and physical condition. Look at a YouGov poll that was done for the Times. It shows that 54% of respondents believe that Biden's health issues were covered up, with 68% of those responding saying that they felt Harris had a, quote, great deal to do with concealing the truth about Joe Biden's health. Another poll, this one conducted by the Democracy Institute and Daily Express, found that 62% of Americans felt Harris lied to the American public about the president's health. Now, this is another issue that's not going to go away. This is another issue that Kamala Harris is going to have to come up with an answer for. The YouGov poll, according to the New York Post, was conducted between July 22nd and 23rd, uh, surveyed 1,170 registered voters and has a margin of error of 3.2%. The Democracy Institute Daily Express poll uh, was done July 24th, surveyed 1,200 people with a margin of error of 3%. Democrats, of course, began calling for Biden to step aside following his uh, poor performance 
in the June 27th debate. Where he froze, he lost his train of thought, he seemed to be confused, he seemed to, at times when Donald Trump would be speaking, he seemed to be staring off into space. And it took actor George Clooney writing a an op-ed that appeared in the New York Times on July the 10th to finally start a national conversation on whether or not Joe Biden should stay in the race. Now think about that for a minute, too. At a June fundraiser, prior to the debate, George Clooney wrote that wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020 that I recognize. He said the same man we all witnessed at the debate was a different person. George Clooney, of course, has been one of Joe Biden's biggest supporters. He helped him raise millions of dollars at this fundraiser in June. And he has is on the re- on the record as acknowledging that something was wrong. Something was 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 not right, but nobody wanted to talk about it. So think of the the irony that it took a Hollywood elite to finally speak up when nobody else would speak up and say, you know what, folks, I think there's something wrong with the president. I don't think that's the Joe Biden that I have known for all these years. I don't think that's the Joe Biden that I helped get elected in 2020. Somebody needs to check into this guy. Somebody needs to check this out. I don't think he's capable of running again. It took, (laughs) it took George Clooney to draw Joe Biden out. And how much did Kamala Harris know about this? Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can, you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, Either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single track transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. So here's the reality, and I know we've spent a lot of time today and this week talking about Kamala Harris. But let's face it, folks, <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about because we've got to make sure that we educate our friends, our family, uh, our church friends, anybody that will talk politics with you. We have to educate them on what it would mean for Kamala Harris to be sitting behind the resolute desk in the Oval Office. So if you or anyone you know is even considering a vote for Kamala Harris, ask yourself how you feel about securing the southern border. Let's just focus on this one issue. This one issue could be the deciding factor on whether Vice President Harris deserves a promotion in November. I think you know the answer to it, but let's just review a few things. The border crisis, according to some of the border experts, would reach new heights if Vice President Kamala Harris becomes President Kamala Harris in November. President Joe Biden, of course, withdrew from the presidential race on Sunday, immediately endorsed Harris, making her the leading contender. She'll most likely get her party's nomination. Not for sure, but likely. Her past voting record in the U.S. Senate kind of tells you, gives you a preview of what she would do as president when it comes to federal immigration. And and some of her recent actions as vice president kind of gives you a full full picture of what she would do as well. Eric Wark is research director for Numbers USA, 
a group that works towards limiting illegal immigration in the U.S., said in a conversation with the Daily Caller News Foundation about possible border policies and any changes if Harris were to replace Biden in the White House. He said, I would say more of the same or potentially even worse. Biden had a history of being at least rhetorically against illegal immigration. Harris has yet to come out and say it's a, that it's a crime and we need to enforce the law, he said. Clearly, she was tasked with addressing the border crisis by President Biden, and her approach was basically to say, don't come. That was the extent of her policy approach. But I think when you dig a little bit deeper, and according to Numbers USA, which they, they publish a report card, if you will, on every single lawmaker in Congress, they evaluate how they perform on immigration and other border security issues. During her very short time in the Senate, and, you, and that's the other thing you have to remember, Kamala Harris didn't have a long uh, career in the U.S. Senate. She had just served a few years when Joe Biden tapped her as his running mate. So during that short tenure in the U.S. Senate, she had earned an F, the lowest possible score offered by the group when it came to immigration issues and her votes. The then-senator earned failing grades for votes on a host of immigration-related issues like border security, interior enforcement, refugee management, and amnesty, and all of this according to Numbers USA. Numbers USA highla- highlighted her 2019 co-sponsorship of the Raider Act, which would have blocked then-President Donald Trump's construction of the border wall. And then her 2019 co-sponsorship of what was called the FACE Act, which would have made it more difficult for Trump to continue border wall construction. Two different times, she signed on with her Democrat colleagues to try to stop this. The group also graded her vote against the Secure and Protect Act, which they argue would have positively reformed immigration uh, immigration law and, and how they settle into the United States. Other border hawks expressed trepidation over Harris's enforcement record. Um, R.J. Hallman, president of the National Immigration Center for Enforcement, told the Daily Caller News Foundation Kamala Harris wasn't just bo- uh, Biden's border czar. She was his abolished ICE director, directing the agency in charge of enforcing our immigration law to willfully violate them. He said now that Biden's out of the picture, she is sure to return to some of the most insane anti-enforcement positions that we've ever seen from an elected official. As illegal border crossings quickly climbed early in the Biden administration, and and she was tapped by Joe Biden to to lead an effort to address what she uh, called the root causes of this illegal immigration from Central America primarily, uh, she's now saying that she really wasn't the border czar. However, Border Patrol encounters at the southern border reached record-setting levels since she took office with Joe Biden. And this is according to the latest Customs and Border Protection. They're just simple numbers. That's public information. This is not my opinion. Enforcement experts have noted that the root causes of the illegal immigration still remain unaddressed, that she didn't even uh, address those things. Uh Mr. Hallman says the choice in November will now be even more clear. Mass deportation or mass release of illegal aliens and violent criminals into American communities. Harris compared Immigration and Customs Enforcement, uh, ICE, to the Ku Klux Klan during a November 2018 Senate confirmation hearing. She asked Ron Vitello, a nominee to lead the agency at the time, if he knew there was a, quote, perception among Latino immigrants that ICE agents operate like Klan members. Senator Harris at the time also suggested during a June 2018 media interview that ICE should be essentially abolished and rebuilt from scratch. So not only is she not going to enforce the laws that we have on the books, Kamala Harris has a record of wanting to just eliminate ICE altogether. We don't even need ICE. From the text line, Jennifer says... Radical leftist Kamala Harris snubbed the embattled Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu this week. He gave a passionate speech to the Joint Congress about the state of radicalism in the world. And where was Kamala? 
speaking at a sorority convention in Indiana. Jennifer says, wouldn't you expect a VP and presidential candidate to be there to greet and listen to one of America's greatest allies? No, because Kamala sides with the thousands of radical anti-Jew protesters who are outside of the Capitol tearing down American flags and replacing them with Palestinian flags. Faye writes, for a presidential candidate to snub Netanyahu should make it clear that come November 5th, that person should remain just a candidate. Harris is arrogant and the most liberal. Also, she wants no fracking, so try putting gas in your car. If God forbid she became president, I truly would not vote to make her dog catcher. Thank you, Faye. Appreciate your comments on our text line. Christy says, as far as Netanyahu, I hope those protesters, quotation marks, are on video, and I hope they are arrested and jail them like those from January 6th. It's only fair, right, uh, Christy? I know that was a rhetorical question <laughs> because I think you know what Biden and Kamala Harris thinks about fairness, and they believe that the January 6ers should remain, they, that they should rot in jail. Appreciate your comments on the text line. They're always welcome. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of just the truth to some friends just click on the share button send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in november we got to build an army of conservatives the way we beat joe biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth hey keep those comments coming via the Furman ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control